Proclaiming God's matchless grace and the blessed hope. This is 96.9 DXBPFM, your hope radio. Good morning once again. Welcome to Youth Let's Talk, where we grow together in building a character for eternity. This is your Kapaglaum Jess, and this program is especially prepared for our young people. Time check, it's 9.34 a.m., April 15, Wednesday. We have a greeting from the last four-digit number, 8866. It says, Hi, good morning. Igreet na ako akong mga sisters, sila si Heidi Loxin. Geraldine Villegas, Lalaine Arilia, request kung song, your wish, ug one day at a time. Ang nagreet ilang sister, Marites Datoon. Thanks, Kapaglaum Jess. Thank you so much for your consistency in tuning in in our program, Mar- Kapaglaum Marites. And we'll surely play your song later on. Now, we'll continue on in our discussion. Welcome once again, Kapagawam Robin. Thank you, thank you. Yes. Now, we just discussed, or we just defined the meaning of temptation, and what are the s- examples of these. But right now, the c- second question is, many people say, we are mere human beings, tao lamang, like that, who fall into sin so easily, and it's our nature to sin. Now, what can you say about this? Well, uh, I've heard that many times that often one would try to justify mm-hmm. what one does by, by saying something like that, and it's interesting. Uh, I believe it was it was the psalmist who, who best and very aptly said it. it. It's found in Psalm 51. Psalm 51. Psalm 51 is the, is the psalm written, as scholars would suggest, it's a psalm written right after David has had that incident with Bathsheba. Mm and to which Nathan comes and rebukes him for that which he has done and David comes out after that scholar suggests that right after Nathan left it is between Nathan's leaving and the next morning is when uh, David penned this psalm in Psalm 51 look at what he says in verse 5 behold I was shapen in iniquity and in sin did my mother conceive me behold I was shapen in iniquity, and in sin did my mother conceive me. And so, uh, I think I think that phrase and that understanding is, is quite well derived to a certain extent from that which David said that I was shaped in iniquity. But here's here's what somebody needs to understand. Yes, there is a a tendency, there is a propensity in in our nature mm. inclined towards sin. But here's here's a thought. Here's a thought for us to feed upon. I go out, and for instance, I'm passing by a bank, and I see, you know, uh, someone walking out with a bag filled with uh, mm. with cash. And what if I'm tempted, you know, wow, that a lot of cash. Maybe if I have that cash, well, life would be so good. Mm. Now it's one thing for me to be tempted, and a whole different thing for me to Did go you? out. Yes. And, and then steal. Um, in that same context, uh, you meet a long certain certain person, and you know you get angry and you know, you you want to kill them completely. <laughs> um, one has to understand how far one drives thought. Just because just because I am tempted to steal, does not give me the permission to go ahead and I steal. See. One can be inclined, for instance, you're hungry. One can be hungry, that does not give me the permission just because I'm hungry to go steal money and buy food. Mm. So one can be inclined to sin. I understand when, when somebody says it's in my nature to sin. Well, I yes, I, I am inclined to, I could be inclined to sin, but that does not give me the permission to sin. Mm-hmm. See, those are two different things. Those are, those are completely two different things. Now, sometimes let's take a look at Yes. Sometimes we make it an, uh, as an excuse, like... Yeah. The, the truth is, many, many would use it to justify. Yes. Justify the, the very act that they would so much enjoy. Now, 
there's, there's, a, there's an amazing passage in the, in the book, 1 John. Mm. 1 John chapter 3, uh, this, is, this is something that really, really moves me and, and, and I'd like our brothers and sisters listening over the air uh, to be able to appreciate this from the context of the scriptures. Mm. 1 John chapter 3 and verse 1, Behold what manner of love the, the Father hath bestowed upon us, that we should be called the sons of God, Therefore the world knoweth us not, because it knew him not. Mm. Now we're talking about the love that God has bestowed upon us as, as his children. We are called the sons of God. Yes. Very nice, verse 2. Wow. Beloved, now we are the sons of God, and it doth not yet appear what we shall be. But we know that when he shall appear, referring now to the, to the, to the coming of Christ, when he shall appear, we shall be like him. We shall see him as he is. Mm. Now he's talking about the coming of Christ and he says, when we see him, we shall be like him. We're first called the sons of God. That includes daughters also, by the way. Ladies should not <laughs> be left out. We are called the sons and daughters of God. Mm. And we don't know what life is. We don't completely see or appear what we shall be, but we will know, the text says, when we see Jesus. But now pay attention to verse 3, 1 John chapter 3 and verse 3. Yeah. It says, every man that has this hope, which hope? The hope of seeing Jesus. Mm. Every man who has this hope in him purifieth himself. himself even as he is pure. Uh -huh. Now that's amazing for me to read. Mm. That passage is saying that if I desire to behold Jesus, then I as a child of God have to be as pure as Jesus is. Now, you and I very clearly understand that that is a very, very, very tall order. <laughs> it seems like it's impossible. <laughs> exactly. When we, when we read something like that, it begins to it begins to shake you completely from within and sometimes you know when we try to preach about that that certain and uh, this kind of topic it's like when we fall we are being called as hypocrites or sort of like that so sometimes it's very hard for me uh, completely, completely. <laughs> and it seems almost next to impossible mm -hmm. to be able to to be able to follow this line and, and, and yet, what, what's so amazing is, uh, the Bible itself gives us such an amazing, such an amazing outlook on life, and that it helps us to see the, the truthfulness. In fact, one of my, one of my favorite devotional books um, puts it this way. Uh, it says, it is the book, Our High Calling. Mm. In reference to this text, um, the book says, does this text mean, the text that we have just read, does this text mean that the human agent can remove one stain of sin from his soul? No. No, no. Then what does it mean to purify himself? It means to look upon the Lord's great moral standard of righteousness, the holy law of God, and see that he is a sinner in the light of that law. Hmm. Now, the next statement is what is moving to me. It is he that abideth in Christ yes. that is a Christian. Mm -hmm. Now, I'd like us to continue on in 1 John 3. I'm, I'm, I'm building up a little bit of a foundation for us to appreciate this. Yes. Uh, what when, when someone says, oh, we are humans and we'll keep on sinning, and yet the Bible is saying, no, you have to, if you're expecting to see Jesus, you have to be pure just like him. But the truth is, I don't have the strength to make okay, myself pure. Yes. Because I am a mortal, uh, I am a natural being fighting uh, and a supernatural being who is the devil. And every time natural and supernatural fight, I will always be defeated. Yes. And then many who are listening to us, including me, have experienced that, that defeat and that failure because we try to fight the devil on our own. But, but take a look at this. First John 3.3 3 tells us we have to purify ourselves just as Jesus is pure. But read with me verse 6, 1 John 3, 6. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth not, whosoever, whosoever sinneth hath not seen him, neither known him. Now the first part of that text is what is so special and beautiful. Mm. Whosoever abideth in him sinneth 
not. So it's not like it's not specific for only Christians. It's not only for Muslims, but it's like general, right? Am I correct? See, it is. It is. It is general because for John three sixteen tells me God so loved the world, yes, not just yeah. Christians and Muslims and Hindus. Mm. Jesus is God is telling me He loves the world. Which is why he gave his only begotten son. First mm. John three six is telling me, whosoever, regardless of who they are, what racial backgrounds, what ethnic backgrounds, mm. wherever you come from, if anybody abides in Christ, they cannot sin. That is the truth. Wow. Amen. Now that's a tough statement to even take in. <laughs> He's saying, whoever abides in Christ. Sin is not, cannot sin. What does that mean? See, now I'm speaking from personal, personal application. Mm. When we abide in Christ, the truth is to all our listeners and to you, my dear sister. Every time, every time we abide in Christ, the truth is we don't have time to sin. True. So See, how how can we do that? How can we abide that, in Christ? That's exactly what I'm saying. I'm I, I'm I'm telling this from experience. Whenever we abide in Christ, and what does that mean? That Spend means to engage. Christ. That means to engage in the very work of Christ. Mm -hmm. That means to engage in the very things that Jesus did. How does one abide in Christ? By just acknowledging that I cannot do it on my own. Number one. Mm. And then to keep looking into who Jesus is. I've got three texts for us to appreciate this. Okay. Let's go to Romans, Romans three verse twenty-three. Three twenty-three. Yes. What does it say? For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Okay. Number one, everybody. How do we abide in Christ? Number one, I have to acknowledge, Lord, I have sinned. And I have come short of the glory of God. See, majority of people do not experience life everlasting and life abundant is because many people just do not want to accept that they are sinners and they have sinned. Yeah, we try to cover try ourselves. To, <laughs> exactly, we try to think of ourselves as too self-righteous, mm -hmm. and that Pharisaical behavior comes into us. No, we are too smart and we are too righteous. Number mm -hmm. one is. We have to acknowledge, and it's that we, dangerous if we don't have that conscience of, you know. See, because the Holy Spirit self. is always <laughs> pleading with us. Mm. The Holy Spirit is always pleading with us to show us our want, our lackings, mm. and if we don't submit into that, then we are in in great, great danger. So Romans three twenty three tells us all have sinned, and we have to accept that. The next statement is Romans six verse twenty three. Romans six verse twenty three, it says, yes. "For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord." Number one, all have sinned. Number two, anybody who has sinned, the wages of sin is death. Death. These are the two things every human being has to acknowledge. Lord, I have sinned. Because I have sinned, I know I deserve to die. These two things have to be clear. In anybody who is wanting to acknowledge and grow in Christ, mm. victory over temptation, abiding in Christ. Lastly, Galatians chapter three. Galatians chapter three, verse thirteen. Thirteen it says, "Christ hath redeemed us from the curse of the law, being made a curse for us. For it is written, Cursed is every one that hangeth on a tree." Now the third truth is the most magnificent and redeeming truth. Galatians three thirteen is saying Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. Yeah. First John three four says, "Sin is the transgression of the law." Yes. And because we just read in Romans six twenty three, if we have sinned, which means breaking the law, if we break the law, and the, which means we have committed sin, the wages of sin is. Yes. But Galatians three thirteen is saying Christ has redeemed us from the curse of the law. What is that curse of the law? See, the law by its nature is not a curse. Mm -mm. But when we work against the law, we are invoking that curse of death. Yeah. And so we are redeemed. Christ, Paul is emphasizing that we Christ has redeemed us from that curse. Now, what is that curse? Because if you broke the law, which means you've committed sin, and the wages of sin mm -hmm. is death. 
Christ has redeemed us from that curse which is death. But how did he redeem us? Galatians 3.13 is saying for it is mm-hmm. for he has redeemed us from the curse of the law. He mm-hmm. was he was being made a curse for uh-huh. us. See, this, this, this is what helps me see a new morning every day. Mm-hmm. Lord, I have sinned. I have fallen short of your glory. I know I deserve to die, but the Bible tells me Christ became the curse for us. Christ took upon that debt. Second Corinthians 5.21 says, He who knew no sin became sin so that we might be made righteous. Mm-hmm. These are these are absolute moral truths one needs to inscribe and imbibe into their lives and their hearts that we deserve to die because we have sinned. But there is a God who loves us so much, who gave His only begotten Son so that we would not have to die because of sin, but that He paid that wage of sin by dying Himself. See, this is an absolute love of God. How do we abide in Christ? We have to acknowledge, Lord, we are sinners. Lord, we deserve to die, but then we have to keep gazing into the sacrifice of Jesus. Hmm. So how can we... Yes. Kapaglaong Robin, um, this is the first step. Then how can we maintain in abiding in Christ? Now see, that's the, that's the very next step. Hmm. How do we maintain? Let's go to... I believe it's... Second or First Corinthians 15. It is either First Corinthians... 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 31. Okay. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 31. Once we have acknowledged that we have sinned, we deserve to die. Now we keep looking into the sacrifice of Jesus. Every day meditate that it took the life of Jesus to give me life. Mm. He died a death he did not deserve to give me life that I did not deserve. 1 Corinthians 15 and verse 31, the words of Paul. Paul says, I protest by your rejoicing, which I have in Christ Jesus our Lord. I die daily. How do we abide in Christ? Many people think, oh, I will come to church and I will sing praises. I will do a special number. I will sing hymns. I will put my tithes and offering. Oh, wow, I have found Jesus. Now through the whole week, I have nothing to worry. Hmm. We have forgotten where we began. First Peter five eight. Be sober, be vigilant. The enemy is roaming about like a roaring lion. He doesn't just roam about you when you go to church. He is roaming about you through the whole week as well. We fail to understand that many times we don't plan our day. We don't plan how we what all we were going to do today. But the truth is, the devil has our day planned completely. That's and if we and if we don't watch out, if we don't surrender our lives to God early in the morning as we get up, we are going to be in trouble. Paul has just given me a solution. How do I abide in Christ? Paul says, when you wake up in the morning, the first thing you need to do is to tell God, God, I want to die today. Kill the I. Die to self. Yes, myself. I the I factor has to die. Mm. And when I die, only then do we find, only then do we find victory. Which is why, which is why it it, it is Paul. Paul, go with me to Galatians 2. The words of Paul. Paul really emphasizes and and builds up this this, this wonderful thought. Galatians 2. Galatians 2 and verse 20. I am crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live, yet not I, but Christ liveth in me. Now, Paul is saying, I am crucified with Christ. Hmm. The I, he's saying the I that I was referring to, I die daily. He's saying the I has been crucified with Christ. Nevertheless, I live. In other words, he's saying, I am crucified, but you might think, oh, how are you crucified? You're still living. (laughs) I still see you. So Paul is clarifying. He's saying, I'm crucified with Christ. And yes, you would see me living. But notice, it is not I, but it is Christ who lives in me. Mm. The truth of abiding in Christ is every day, I have to destroy self. Surrender our will to His will. Every single day, we have to get up and tell the Lord, Lord, destroy me and fill that space with Jesus Christ. Mm-hmm. The, our problem is, and, and I want I want I want our brothers and sisters listening to catch this. Our problem is, we 
create a space by telling, oh, I want to give up this bad habit and that bad habit. I want to give this up and that up. And that's a good thing. We have to give up these things. And, yes. and the Lord empowers us to give up these bad habits. Mm. Our problem is when we let go of these bad habits, we have now created a space. For instance, a man smokes and one day he quits smoking. The question he needs to ask himself is now, what do I do in the free time? Because I used to smoke for hours every day. Mm-hmm. Now, what do I do in all those hours when I'm not smoking? And some people will just sit back and idly sit around and not do anything. Mm. And the Bible tells us that if we just clean out and not fill it with something else, the Bible, Jesus, in fact, warns us that that, that evil spirit that left is going to bring seven stronger demons it and come worse. back to you. It will be much, much worse. Mm. So you have to change it with something else that is better. Exactly. We have to fill in then. Once sin has left us and now the space is empty, now we plead with Christ to fill us with His Holy Spirit. Mm. And He comes and He enables us to be victors in Christ Jesus. Which is why Paul is saying, I have died to self, therefore I no longer do my will. But the will of the Father is done in me. It is Christ who lives in me. And the truth to our brothers and sisters is that when Christ lives in us, we cannot sin. Amen. I like what you shared a while ago that we cannot do on our own strength to purify ourselves, right? It exactly. is only God who can change us, who can change the character. So the change of life actually composes of two things. First is the cooperation of man and God. So it's not just God, but it is us also that is to submit ourselves to God. Am I correct? Definitely. Yes. Uh, in fact, in fact, you have you have touched uh, you have touched a very sensitive issue in every human being's life. Mm-hmm. The greatest struggle of a human being is submission. Yeah. <laughs> the first <Okay>. step. <laughs> We think too much of ourselves. We think we are too smart and too strong and mm. too bright. Mm. The truth is, we have to learn to submit. And the problem is, the problem is, we have a very difficult time submitting. Yeah. We like to do things on our own. We like to be too independent. In fact, when you look at Genesis, mm. the first sins that began, they began, they were sins of independence. Eve wanted to be independent from the husband and she went independently to the tree. Then when tempted, she did not consult God, but she independently made a decision to eat. Mm. When she brought the fruit back, she independently asked the Adam to eat also. Adam again made the mistake of independently choosing to eat of the fruit. See, none of them wanted to rely on God. Mm. Uh, things are, are, are I can see myself to, in that situation for a lot one of us. In fact, in <laughs> fact, every human, every human sees a reflection of ourselves in our forefathers, Adam and Eve. Mm. We want to be independent and look at what James 4, 7 is saying. Okay. And now we're moving from abiding to Christ to now overcoming with Christ. Okay, James 4, 7. James 4, verse 7. It says, Submit yourselves therefore to God, resist the devil and he will flee from you. We have a problem. We have a problem. Our problem is we've been resisting the devil, resisting the devil, resisting the (laughs) devil. And we forget we are just humans. The devil is not a human. He's a supernatural Supernatural being. being. And each time we resist him, we will fail because he is stronger. Mm. So we don't follow this equation. See, this is a mathematical, biblical equation. Mm. Number one, submit yourself to God. Number two, resist the devil. Number three, see, if one and two are joined, it will equal to the devil fleeing from you. Mm. How does this work? So, there has to be submission. (laughs) Submission. See, we first have to come to God as Paul says, Lord, I die today. Please destroy the self within me. Destroy every selfish thought and behavior within me. And then come and fill me. See, now what happens is, when... I have submitted myself to God, Christ living in me. It is not me fighting the devil now, it is Christ fighting the devil. Amen. And we know from history that Christ has already defeated him at the cross. 
Amen. What happens is as Christ moves into us and we give him the permission to move into us yes. and come to him every day. See, that's the problem. We can do it occasionally and periodically. <laughs> we have to do it through every passing moment. Yes. We have to do it through each passing day. Lord, come and take me. Come and take me. If you don't, I'm going to make a foolish mistake. So please come and take me. Please come and overpower me. Mm. Then it is Christ who is resisting the devil. See, this is a very important truth for us to understand. If we keep on doing this, keep on doing this, keep on doing this, the devil has no choice but to flee. I'll tell you why. The Bible tells us he doesn't have much time left. Mm -hmm. And so he comes to us and attacks us and tempts us. But if we continuously submit ourselves to God every day, every moment, submit ourselves to God, the devil comes on there and says, Ah, I think I'm wasting my time here. Mm -hmm. This man, this woman is is seated in Christ, and I, I think I'm wasting my time. Let me go tempt someone else. I'm wasting my time here. <laughs> but but see, but see, none none of us can be foolish enough to think that oh, this can just happen overnight. No, 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 not at all. That's the mm. biggest mistake. Some of us celebrate too early, just like just like that racer who is racing the track, and even before he gets to the finish line, he starts celebrating. Oh no, don't 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 ever make that mm. mistake. Because many start the race but don't finish it. Mm. So the you know, Bible is telling us we have to every day submit to God, resist the devil. The time comes when the devil says, "Oh, uh, this man, this woman is so surrendered, so submitted in Christ. I better just leave them alone. Let me just go. Let me just go tempt someone else and lead mm. someone else away from God." You know, Kapagla Um Robin. Well, I was yes. thinking about this discussion. It's like um, you're. Putting yourself in a place where you resist temptations, and it seems like it's very hard if you just imagine it, right? Oh yes. But then you know, I like what Pastor Ekota shared to us last week during the youth convention in Cebu. He mm. said, "Life, uh, Jesus didn't come here on earth to give us a life of ease, because if you're a Christian, if you." choose to follow Jesus, if you choose to surrender yourself or submit yourself to Jesus, then life will not be easy because temptation is very strong for you, right? Exactly. And then the next the next phrase or the next statement was Jesus came here not to give us a life of ease but a life of victory. Mm. Yes. Mm. And that is same the same with what we discussed today. That when we submit ourselves to God, resist the devil, and the equation is the devil will flee from you. In fact, in fact, there is an interesting, interesting admonition by Paul to Timothy in Second Timothy chapter three. Second mm. Timothy three, verse twelve. Three verse twelve. Yeah, and all that will live godly in Christ Jesus shall suffer persecution. Oh, wow. See, the evident fact is this. Many of us paint a very wrong picture of Christianity. Oh, come, mm. come, come. Life is going to be so easy. Yeah. You're going to have such a great time. Yes, you will have a great time. Yes, you will experience heights of power and, 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 and greatness in Christ. But let none forget that anybody who wants to live godly in Christ Jesus, they shall suffer persecution. Anybody so we have to expect to live like, yes, yes. life will be harder. We have to know anytime we want to do right, we will be troubled. Now, anybody on earth can, can you can attest to this fact, I can attest to this fact. If we continue to choose to walk the evil path, life is so easy. Because mm, mm. you are going people. along with the world. <laughs> but the day we say no, I'm going to do the will of my father. Yes. The day you say, no, from this day on, I'm going to do the right thing. Mm -hmm. I guarantee you, you and I know from experience that every time we do that, oh, we are going to face a very, very tough challenge. Yes. Every time, any human on earth will tell you, any time they want to do anything that is right, they face so many struggles, they face so many trials. Why? Because the devil wants them to quit walking the right path and come back to the narrow or come back to the wide path to destruction mm. so we have to remember that anybody who will want to live godly in Christ Jesus they will suffer persecution they will suffer persecution they mm. will be troubled what is our assurance 
our assurance is the assurance of the disciples in the boat in the storm the mm. old song we used to sing that with Christ in my vessel Vessel. I smile at every storm why because he promised me I will never leave you nor forsake you he promised me I will be with you till the end of time he promised me that greater is he who is in you Amen. than he who is in the world Kapag- Our promise- Robin. Yes. yes continue and we have very short time left <laughs> Yes, I would like us to. I would like us to before I end. Mm. I would like us to go very quickly to one simple passage. Mm. Uh it is found it is found in 1st Peter chapter 2. 1st Peter 2 1st Peter 2 I think it's 2nd Peter. 2nd okay. Peter chapter Second Peter 2 verse 20 For if after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ they are again entangled therein and overcome okay, We can stop that. We can stop that. Mm. If after they have escaped the pollutions of the world through the knowledge of the Lord and Savior Jesus Christ if we were living a life of sin we found Jesus we found the love of Jesus he was calling us to him and we gave our life to him and we escaped the pollution of the world by accepting Jesus but then we again get entangled is what peter is saying mm-hmm. we again go back to that life of sin and again get entangled in It's that like sin and we are overcome by that sin mm-hmm. then peter is 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 admonishing us he's reminding us he's warning us because he ends the text by saying if you are entangled again you are overcome the latter end is worse yes. with them than the beginning i want our brothers and sisters you and i as we listen and study this some a concept has to be very clear in our minds many of us first john 1:9 oh if we confess he's faithful and just yeah. to forgive us yes it is true we take yes, advantage we Yes, we can come to him. Yes, he will forgive us. Oh, you know, I can always sin. Why? Because he is faithful and just to forgive me. I can always come back and ask for forgiveness. I want our listeners to completely understand. As children of God, yes, our Father is faithful. He will forgive us. But let nobody feel that they can keep going back and keep running this cycle of sin and forgiveness, sin and forgiveness. Because Peter is reminding us, he don't keep on doing that because the problem is each time you go back you will you will feel less sinful you will feel like oh no it's not so bad it comes mm-hmm. to a point where you don't feel like repenting about it anymore that's the danger you say you become you become more numb to sin mm-hmm. you become more insensitive to sin and you keep on going and you feel like that which you're doing is the right path there is a danger There is a danger and I want one of all of us to understand this there is a danger in continuing to go back to our old life yes. to our old pathways to our old sinfulness because there will come a time when we will no longer feel that it is sinful. Yeah. So kapag ang Robin. Hope? Yes. Ah uh, yes, please continue. <laughs> I was asking then what is our hope? What is our solution? Okay. Let us just turn to Romans 10 and verse 13. Romans 10 and 13. Yeah. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Be anybody, anybody, anybody who's listening to us right now and even as you and I talk, anybody who feels that they've been overcome by sin and it is too difficult that in too dark some in fact I know there are some who are listening and they they're wondering and they're telling them that you know I can never go back to God I've gone so far away mm-hmm. I've gone so mm-hmm. low and I'm so broken God will not accept me problem is they have forgotten who God is above everything God is our father amen God is our lover and just as a father hungers and craves for his own children in the same way our loving father desires to be with us desires to be united with us does not stand the separation that sin has created within us which is why Romans 10:13 is telling us if ever we call upon the name of the lord we shall be saved we have to cry unto him lord help us rescue us 
give us victory pull us out from a life of sin and the promise is he will indeed give us the victory amen but we have to boldly come to him come boldly not because we are righteous beings you know mm-hmm. we come boldly because we are coming to our father i remember when i was a young child whenever i wanted anything i had any struggle any problems i would boldly go to my father father i want this <laughs> There was there was no fear. There was no there was no anxiety. There was no second thoughts. Why? Because I was going to my own father. Many yeah. many have forgot have forgotten that because we have started to treat God like he's a dictator. Yeah. We start to look at him like some president of some universe. <laughs> yes, he created the universe. Yes, yes he's the king <laughs> of the universe. But above everything, he is my father. father. Wow. And I can go to my father whenever I feel like I'm the promise and the promise of the bible is jesus is what john says john says the words of the, the thought of jesus is that if any man come to me i will in no wise cast them out mm. any of us turn to him today if any of us call upon the name of our lord he the promises we shall be saved so i i speak out to my brother my sister who are struggling in sin if today they go on their knees consecrate their lives back mm-hmm. to god mm-hmm. i know the lord is waiting to deliver them from a life of sin when is the right time kapaglang robin now is the yes. right time right now because tomorrow tomorrow we may never see the next second we may not see we cannot delay one more moment in sin mm. we have to come to our savior now yes so i hope we didn't scare our youth fellow youth that when we submit our lives to jesus life will be very difficult so kapaglaum robin um what can you say or advice to our young people when you surrender to our lives to jesus even life will be difficult What advice can you tell to them? Well, <coughs> I just want everybody to do that with Jesus did. See the example of Jesus is so amazing for me to follow. If there are two things we have to learn from the life of Jesus is this. Number one, Jesus spent night after night after night in prayer. Mm. He kept himself connected to God. No wonder Paul says it in 1 Thessalonians 5:17, pray without ceasing. No matter where we are, see, we forget prayer is the easiest thing anybody on earth can do. Hmm. You don't have to always close your eyes and go on your knees. Oh, while that is good when you do have the time in your home, go ahead and do that. Hmm. But when you're in class, when you're at work, when when the teacher is moved out, another teacher is coming in that period of time, just look up into the heavens, just talk to God. Hmm. We need to learn to stay connected to our Savior. I remember important. I yes. remember the quote that I posted on Facebook last night. It says the sweetest time that we can have is when we pray. It's because it's the time when we talk to the one who loves us the most. In fact, it's the sweetest because we are now talking to the one who created sweetness. <laughs> True, yes. It's the way we're spending time with the sweet maker. Mm, mm. And he he adds that sweetness to our life. Yes. Number two, mm, yes, number, number two. two, we have to put scriptures to memory. Hmm. Okay. Jesus did Jesus, that a lot of times. Yes. Yes, that's that's what we're following his example. When he was tempted, three times he says, "It is written. It is written. It is written." And he was quoting the Old Testament scripture. We have to learn to use the Bible. See, that's why we have to be so acquainted mm. with the Bible. What's the use Because of the Bible if we'll just leave it at the corner, right? Every every verse in the Bible is like a bullet. It's like a missile. It's like a nuclear weapon for sin. Mm-hmm. Every time we are tempted, we need to know. We need to learn how to use the Scripture as ammunition, mm. as a rifle, as a missile against sin. Yes. Each time we are tempted, we ought to also, like Christ, stand up, stand up, and declare that thus saith the Lord in our life. Every brother and sister who is listening, they have to stay connected to Christ in prayer. Amen. They have to continue to pray and stay connected to their Savior. They have to put Scripture to memory. Whatever free time, I, I really highly recommend this. Whatever free time you have, open your Bible, mm. pick up a verse, 
start to memorize Memorized. it. I really appreciate that which you're doing in your radio program. You begin by asking, encouraging people to memorize a text. Imagine if you can memorize one text every day. Mm. By the end of the month, you have memorized 30 or 31 texts. Mm. See, what's happening is you are gaining and gathering more ammunition. Every time you're attacked, you have a verse that wreak or counter attacks mm. that, that very attack. Lastly, each of us, after we have prayed, after we've studied the Bible, we need to learn to go and tell someone about Jesus. Yes. Witnessing is a very, very, very powerful tool. Mm. And in my own experience, when I stay active in witnessing, when I go out and keep telling more people about Jesus, I find that I truthfully, the, the words the words of John become so clear that he who abides in him cannot sin. If you abide in the life of Christ, Christ was always praying, always in the scripture, always mm. sharing the scriptures. Mm -hmm. If we continue to live this life like Christ, we will have no time to sin. Oh, I wish we have that time that Kappa Glaum Robin can share with us the wonderful message from the sanctuary. Because I think this will really, you know, it's, it's really relating relative to our topic today. But since time is very short, time is 10.15 already, we added up 15 minutes from our cut off time. But thank you so much, Kapaglaum Robin, for your oh, time. Thank you so much for your help. And to summarize, um, since we discussed about abiding, I'd like to uh, recall the verses that we have tackled today. To our listeners, you may write this down and you may memorize this later in your homes. First is Romans 3.23, Romans 6.23, Galatians 3.13. And the rest are 1 Corinthians 15.31, Galatians 2.20, James 4.7. And the last three are 2 Timothy 3.12, 2 Peter 2.20, and Romans 10.13. Thank you very much to our listeners. Thank you to our guest, Kapaglaum Robin. And one quote that I read here, Temptation is everywhere, but so is God. Am I right? Absolutely. Yes. So, right now, I'd like to take this chance to thank everybody for spending your time with us and for praying for this ministry. Please continue to pray for all the anchors. For all the volunteers who are working here and also to our listeners, may lives be changed and may more, may many more souls come close to Jesus. This is our prayer and I'd like to take this chance also to thank our leaders from South Philippine Union Conference, North Central Mindanao Conference, to our Bogontas SDA Church officers and members, Longvine Radio donors and sponsors, thank you very much, and to our technical engineer, Sir Hans Arpeler, station manager, Pastor Judy Ben G. Kabil, and above all, we thank God for His faithfulness and goodness towards us all every day. Thank you very much, and before we end, maybe I'd like to request our brother, Kapaglaum Robin, to please pray for us. Definitely, let us pray. Almighty Father, we thank you for the privilege and the gift of life you have given to us. We thank you for you have called us, not so that we would be swayed away and strayed away into this dark, sinful world, but that we would stand up as victors in Christ Jesus. Mm. Oh Lord, how when we read the book of Revelation, it encourages us that he who overcomes, he who overcomes, it repeats that phrase so many times, because you are desiring for us to overcome the world and be victorious in Christ Jesus. Lord, mm -hmm. thou knowest when we have tried on our own, we have failed. So help us, as our, our dear brother in Christ, Paul, has told us, let us die daily. Mm -hmm. Let us put death to self daily. Lord, please come and help us. Please come and empower us. Please come and enlighten us so that we can also be victorious in you. Amen. How precious are the words, Lord, as we read the book Christ Object Lesson. And the author pens these special words of prayer. Lord, take my heart for I cannot give it. Mm -hmm. It is thy property. Keep it pure for I cannot keep it for thee. Save me in spite of myself, my weak, unchrist-like self. Mold me, fashion me 
raise me into a pure and holy atmosphere where the rich current of thy love can flow through my soul. Lord, please help us. For we would like to, we would like to be molded and shaped in the way you would want us to go. We thank you for the privilege you've given us to study this subject and how you have promised that if we are crucified with Christ and Christ lives in us and we abide in him, we cannot sin. In fact, Jesus goes on to say that if you abide in me and I abide in you, we will bear much fruit. Mm. Lord, we would like to bear fruit for the kingdom of heaven. I want to especially pray for our listeners, my brother who is struggling, my sister who is struggling with sin, wherever they are listening from, whoever listening and tuned in at this moment, I plead that they may tune themselves to the frequencies of heaven. Mm. Will you please empower them with your Holy Spirit? Make them overcomers with sin. Give them the courage and the victory and the boldness to stand up and say they do not belong in sin. They are going home to their Savior. Thank you very much, Lord, for this blessed hope. Thank you very much for loving us unconditionally. We ask all these blessings in Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Amen. Thank you very much, Kapaglaw Robin. May God bless you more. Thank you also to our listeners and for spending your time with us. Hope to be with you once again tomorrow from 9 a.m. to 10 a.m. So this is your Kapaglaw Jess. Happy to serve you. <laughs> and now signing off. Till next time. Ta-ta. Thank you for listening to Youth Press Talk, only here at 96.9 FM, on my Hope Radio. Proclaiming God's matchless grace and the blessed hope, this is 96.9 DXBP-FM, your